This is a once in a lifetime offer of my recently published books in all formats. Please take advantage of these discounts by adding these books to your personal library and be sure to share some of them with your friends and family. Thanks. Welcome to Home Family Gathering, where everyone has a place at the table in the Father's house. My name is Blake Higginbotham, and I'm honored that you've joined us today. I'm going to be reiterating a word that I released in part um, today. And I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm in obedience to Holy Spirit. I'm going to release it, not as a prophetic insight, but as a prophetic word for us. And I believe that what I'm going to share with you today is going to activate this word in your heart. It's going to encourage you. It's going to empower you. It's going to embolden you. It's going to, in every way, resonate with what you're already hearing by the Spirit and bring great confirmation and even be reconfirmed over and over again, starting today, uh, for whatever period of time that this Karyos moment represents. But I want to start by saying acceleration is what I've been hearing, a prophetic insight concerning acceleration. Acceleration in depth and width as it pertains to the ecclesia rising and the forward advancement of the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. The process will include detestation for the purpose of manifestation and manifestation for the purpose of glorification. The process will include detestation for the purpose of manifestation and manifestation for the purpose of glorification. That's what I heard. Detestation is intense dislike, dislike of the way things are, and I like to call it Holy Spirit dissatisfaction. If you haven't experienced a Holy Spirit dissatisfaction, I believe you're I believe you're about to experience it. But I believe if you have been experiencing a Holy Spirit dissatisfaction, that you're going to move toward manifestation. In the Greek, manifestation is apocalyp apocalypsis. Apocalypsis. Where have you heard that word in the English? Apocalypsis. What's another word for apocalypsis? Our proper pronunciation is apocalypsis apocalypse what does it mean disclosure appearing coming light and manifestation be revealed revelation so the apocalypse or the apocalypse that we need is the manifestation the manifestation of the sons and daughters of yahweh for the eagerly listen for the eagerly awaiting creation waits for the unveiling Another translation says manifestation. Another translation says unveiling of the sons and daughters of God. That's in Romans 8 verses 19 in the New American Standard Bible 2020. Listen to this. For the creation was subjected to futility, futility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Hallelujah. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only that, but we, listen, we also, but also we ourselves, Excuse me. We ourselves, for we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only that, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons and daughters, the redemption of our body, which is, a, which is a part of the plan of salvation, the redemption of our body. And that's found in Romans 8, verses 20 through 23 in the NSAB, in the NASB. Now, remember glorification, apocalyptus, 
the apocalypse, the appearing, the coming, the light, and the manifestation, the revealed revelation, the manifestation or the unveiling. It's all of creation is, uh, listen, he subjected, he subjected all creation to futility, not willing to, but because of him who subjected it. And then, and I want you to hear this part in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. And all of creation is still groaning and suffering the pains of childbirth together until when? Everybody say it now. Until now. Let this word be activate, activated in you right now, until now. Not until sometime later, but until now. And not only that, but we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly. That's what I believe being the Holy Spirit dissatisfaction of detestation that's been going on for the adoption of sons and daughters, the redemption of our bodies. Now let's talk about glorification for a minute. Remember, the process will include detestation for the purpose of manifestation and manifestation for the purpose of glorification. Glorification is to make glorious by bestowing honor, praise, or admiration, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Oh, hallelujah. That they also may be one in us so that the world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. I have given, I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given to me. What did he say? I have present tense. I have present tense given to them the glory and honor which you have given me. I've shared it with them, that they may be one just as we are one. I and them and you and me, that they may be perfected and completed in one, so that the world may know without, a, without any doubt <clears throat> that you sent me and that you have loved them just as you love, you have loved me. What did he say? He says, I've given them the glory and honor that you gave me. And I, and I want you to know that I want them to know that you love them just as you've loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you've given to me as your gift to me, may be with me where I am right now, so that they may see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, just and righteous Father, although the world has not known you and has never acknowledged you and the revelation of your mercy, yet I have always known you and these believers know without any doubt that you sent me. Hallelujah. And I have made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, overwhelming their heart, and I may be in them. If you're wondering where this is found, it's found in John 17, 21 through 26. It could have been the last prayer that Yahshua prayed. And I've been in agreement with his prayer for all these years, but I sense in my spirit that. This is a now word, a present tense word, that we are going to stop being the, the groaning and pain creation, but we're going to begin to see the manifestation, the revealing and the unveiling of the sons and daughters of God at a level that is unprecedented in history. I believe with all of my heart today that this word is ringing true in your heart. You're no longer, you're no longer longing and loving for his appearing. You are going to begin to show up and he is going to appear. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You are going to begin to manifest the true apocalypsis. Apocalypsis, the true apocalypse is coming. 
that manifestation. And we're going to have, we're going to understand what it means to share his glory and honor. We're going to understand what it means to be loved. We're going to understand what it means to be one. And the part of creation that we're going to influence and impact is going to recognize that we have been sent by him. Hallelujah. That it's really him showing up. But we are showing up in him so that he can appear to them in whatever way, in, 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 in any way that they can receive him. Hallelujah. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly father, the father of the Lord Jesus, all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. <laughs> he sees us wrapped into Christ. He sees us wrapped into Christ. And saints, let me tell you that if you'll walk out with this word activated in your heart starting immediately, there's going to be an unwrapping and an unfolding and a revealing take place because we're going to represent a gift sent to those people of our world, like the UPS man delivering a package. They have a choice to take it off of their front porch before a package pirate steals it. And they have the, they have the right and they have the ability to, to, un, to open and unpack that package. We're going to represent the gift or the package that he sent to them. So, and he's going to, and he's going to, and that which has been wrapped into Christ is going to be unwrapped, unfolded, and revealed. This is why we celebrate him with all of our hearts. And in love, he chose us before he laid the foundation of the universe, not the world, the universe. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we would be seen as, listen, as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. That's found in Ephesians 1, 3 through 4 in the Passion Translation of the Scripture. Now, that word, to the best of my ability at this point, has been delivered. Now, I ask Holy Spirit to breathe on it and activate it in your heart. I want to share this part of my testimony with you to encourage you. I literally heard the voice of the spirit at six or seven years old. And I'll tell you how I heard it. I was in the front yard and on the radio, A.A. Allen was preaching and I was mocking A.A. Allen in the front yard, acting like what he, I would say, repent, repent. And I heard Holy Spirit speak to me just like it was as clear a voice. It was like he queued up a mic from headquarters and he said, don't mock my men, because one day you're going to be one of them. And let his finger off of the button. And I said at that moment, I said, okay. I said, I don't know who that was, but whoever you were, I'm going to pay attention. So I never mocked his men again from six, seven years old. And at 15 years old, I was driving down a hill on Lyon Avenue in Shreveport, Louisiana, speeding, and it was raining because it just started raining and the pavement was wet, as slick as it could be because it wasn't asphalt, it was concrete, and that's even slicker than, than what we call black ice. And I was, I was building up momentum in a three-speed 63 Rambler station wagon, and the light turned from yellow to red, and I saw headlights that were already speeding up the hill on my right to get to go ahead and take advantage of the traffic signal, which was green for them, red for me. And I slammed on the brakes. Then that back then they didn't have uh, anti lock braking systems. And so when I slammed on the brakes, I went into a skid and went even faster 
and I knew I was not going to be able to stop. Are you listening to me? And when I uh, slid into the intersection, there was no way for him to miss us. And my car just moved from the right to the left, not this way, not this way, from the right to the left, one foot. And this car's headlights and bumper touched the passenger side of my car, which was full of teenagers drinking and partying in Shreveport, Louisiana in the middle of the night. I opened the door after all this took place. I opened the door of my car and I got out and I said, praise God. I said to myself, I shook myself. I said, what did you say? And they said, what did you say? I said, that was a near miss. But I said, praise God, loud at 15. He spoke out of me what needed to be said in worship and in glorification to him. And there was not a dent in the passenger side of that 1963 Rambler station wagon. And not a hair on the head of anybody in that car was hurt or touched. That's the first two. I would call them encounters. The next encounter, we were speeding down a levee in my mother's 1956 Buick Roadmaster at 60 or 70 miles an hour, hood surfing. I was the one driving and I was trying my best to throw whoever was on the hood off because that's the object of hood surfing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There was nothing safe about what we were doing. It was ignorant. We had been drinking ripple wine and we had been, we had been chasing it with beer all day long. And here I am 60, 70 miles an hour in that boat, four, 5,000 pound car on the top of the levee racing, trying to throw somebody off of the car. Well, I successfully throwed the first guy off of the car. And then the guy on the hood, when we came to a stop before hitting a gate, are you listening to me? He fell off and slid off of the front of the hood and slid through a barbed wire fence, catching his arm and wrist in the barbed wire, cutting him very deeply to the bone. Well, they decided it was time for me not uh, to stop driving and we weren't gonna do that anymore. So they said, you get in the back seat, we're driving you home and we're taking, we're taking this, this, I'm not going to call his name. We're going to take this, our friend to the hospital to get some stitches. Well, while I was sitting in the back seat, I had a bottle of Ripple in this hand and a beer in this hand. And I slammed that bottle of Ripple down to my leg. And I said, one day I'm going to preach the gospel. And they said, what did you say? Right. They said, what did you say? One day, I'm going to preach the gospel. And they said, he's lost his mind. Let's get him home as quickly as possible before he goes crazy and kills everybody. And let me tell you, that was one year to the day that I heard his voice again. And I want to say this to you. When I heard his voice again on June 14th, 1970, about 5.45 in the evening, a woman who was my now ex-mother-in-law, who is no longer alive and my ex-wife is dead, she was just sharing her story with me. I didn't have any interest in her story. I could care less what she had to say. And all of a sudden, everything went blank. And I was drawn into a place called Messiah into the spirit realm. And I could no longer hear her voice, but I saw her mouth moving. Are you paying attention? And the, and the spirit? Blake? Yes. Marilyn Long just called. They he took Bob to the hospital. He had, it was his heart. And she called and asked for prayer. We'll pray for, we're praying for her right now in the spirit and we'll pray for her at the end. And I, 
I saw that it was her calling. I didn't know Pray what it was about. Him. I'm talking about both of them. They're going to both need Pray it. for him. He's, yeah, well, she has no way to go to be with him, and she doesn't need to be there long anyway, but she's upset because she has no idea what's going on. Let me finish what I'm saying, and then we'll pray. Thank you for interrupting me. It's okay. Anyway, she was talking to me, and all of a sudden, things went just quiet, and I, I sensed that the atmosphere was changing. It was between this dimension and the, another dimension, and I was drawn into the, to a place called Messiah in the spirit, and it was like I was enveloped in a bubble. And I heard the spirit say, while her mouth was moving, I heard the spirit say, find a place of repentance and I'll fill you full of life that you know not of. All this took place in milliseconds. Do you hear what I'm saying? She's still talking, but I can't hear her. In milliseconds. And I said on the inside, I don't know what repentance means. And he says, find a place of repentance and empty yourself out before me and I'll fill you full of life that you know not of. Suddenly, I realized that this was not just a, a summons, that it was a subpoena and that it, that it was more than an invitation. And I sensed in my spirit that this was an offer that I should not refuse. So I said, I will. And instantly grace came upon me to repent while I was talking to the Lord and he was talking to me. I wasn't talking. My spirit was communicating, but he was doing the talking. But when I came back into the now, wherever I was at that time, I call it a place called Messiah in the realm of the spirit. And, in, and, he, and he had me in his telephone booth talking to me. When I came back into this world, into the present, she was still talking and I was doing nothing but weeping uncontrollably. I was crying like I had never cried and I didn't understand why I was. I was it was like the fountains of the deep had been opened and the, and the fountains of, of, from above were, were opened and I was crying from within to without, from without to within and it was flooding down my face and she said, Blake, I hope that I haven't said something that offended you. I said, ma'am, you haven't said anything that offended me. I couldn't even hear you. She said, well, she said, well, she said, you just kind of blanked out for a few seconds. Do you understand that there is no time and space in the spirit? And in the spirit, it felt like moments, but there was only a few seconds that had transpired in this realm. When I said I will, in that moment, I believed that I was saved. I came to a saving knowledge of the truth. But I want you to know what happened next. And she said, you look like you need to go down to the church and meet my husband there and pray. And I said, okay, well, tell me how to get there. And so I got down there. And when I walked in, he said, you look like someone that needs to pray. You get on that end of the altar and I'll get on this end. And you just open up, you pray and you just pour out your heart to the Lord. I want you to know, I don't know what all happened. In that hour and 45 minutes, I was kneeling at that altar. But when I got up from there, I was a changed man. For the first time in my life, I smelled the odor of cut grass. I heard the birds chirping. Everything about the five senses was enhanced. I was a different person. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's all because someone dared share their story with me. I was not interested in their story. I had no interest in what they had to say, but because they, because they took that opportunity to step by faith and share their story, Holy Spirit completed what he started 
a long time ago in my natural life at six and seven years old. And the voice that spoke to me from the place called Messiah enveloped in that bubble in the spirit was the same voice that spoke to me in that front yard on that day over 10 years before. Saints, I'm saying this to you because it's time to step out in faith with an activated word, knowing that it is now, and begin to boldly share your story with those that you encounter on a daily basis. And I believe with all of my heart that there will be a number of those that are, that are going to be saved and added to the ecclesia, those that are being saved on a daily basis from this point on in your life. You will have more disciples to disciple, train, and equip than you've ever had. You will have people that are not just converting to Christianity. You will have people that are not just praying the, the sinner's prayer. You will have people that will be hungry and they will be thirsty after righteousness. They will be, they will be drawing unto you because of the life you represent. Hallelujah. Father, in obedience to your voice today, I've done the best to deliver this word un 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 uninterrupted. But even with the interruptions, Father, the words of, the, of, this, of the words of this message carry a lot of weight, and the words of my story is supernatural. Touch the hearts of those who heard it, and activate them and encourage them and embolden them to go out and become effective bold witnesses for the kingdom of Yahweh. And Father, we believe that this groaning and travailing and pain until now is going to subside, not only in us, but in others. Father, we, decl we declare today that the manifestation, the apocalyptus, the apocalypsis, the true apocalypse, the manifestation, the revealing, the unveiling of the sons is taking place right now in planet Earth. I declare it, decree it, and call it done. Thank you for visiting us today. You're always welcome. Until next time, this is Blake Diggett with Home Family Gathering. You can find all of my books and music at booksbyblh.me and musicbyblh.me. Again, thank you for listening.